we will now begin studying vector value functions. So a vector value function is any function of the form r of t is equal to the vector x of t, y of t, z of t. Remember, you can write as a linear combination of i, j, k. The x, the y, the z are called the component functions, and they are just simply real value functions of the parameter t. So the domain of the vector valued function r is simply determined from the domains of the component function. So for each of the following, we're going to determine the domain and then evaluate at 3.0, pi over 2, and 2 pi over 3. So first we have the function 4 cosine of ti plus t sine of tj. And the first thing we do is we notice that the domain for cosine, so it's called the domain for the x, is all real numbers. And the domain for the y component, sine, is also all real numbers. So the domain for r will also be all real numbers. Right, so the idea is the domain of this function, the vector value function, has to be such that every single component is defined. Right, so now, if we go ahead and evaluate r of 0, all we do is put 0 everywhere we see t, just like we would a regular function. So all we're doing is we're evaluating the two component functions at 0. So we're going to have 4 cosine of 0 i hat plus 3 times sine of 0 j hat, right? Well, cosine of 0 is 1, and sine of 0 is 0, so r of 0 is just i. So for r of pi over 2, we're just doing the same thing. So we'll have 4 times the cosine of pi over 2 i hat plus 3 times the sine of pi over 2 j hat. Well, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so this becomes 3j. And finally, for 2 pi over 3, 4 cosine of 2 pi over 3 i hat plus 3 times the sine of 2 pi over 3 j hat. So cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative a half. Sine of 2 pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And so r of 2 pi over 3 would be negative 2 i hat plus 3 root 3 over 2 j hat. So now we look at the function 3 tangent of t, 4 secant of t, and 5t. So if we look at the domain of the x component, so the domain of tangent. is the set of all real numbers t such that t is not equal to n plus 1 pi over 2, where n is an integer. Right, so tangent cos is sine over cosine, right? And cosine is 0 at every odd integer multiple of pi over 2 which means you can't have those values in the domain for tangent. So that's what this is saying. So the domain for the y component, well, it's the same, right? Because secant's 1 over cosine. So it's also the set of all real numbers t, such that t does not equal 2n plus 1 
times pi all over 2 for integer n. Now, the domain of z, 5t, it's just all real numbers. So the domain for our vector value function is the set of all real numbers t such that t is not equal to 2n plus 1 pi all over 2 for integer n. Okay, so now to go ahead and evaluate it. So R of zero, we would have three tangent of zero, four secant of zero, and then five times zero. Tangent of zero is just zero. Secant of zero is one, and so the vector would be zero for zero. Now r of pi over two is undefined, right? Because pi over two is not in the domain of r. So we can't evaluate r of pi over two. So uh, this is 1, this one was 2, so now let's look at 3, so we want r of 2 pi over 3, so it'll be 3 times the tangent 2 pi over 3, then 4 times the secant of 2 pi over 3, and then finally 5 times. Okay, so tangent of 2 pi over 3 is negative square root of 3. The secant of 2 pi over 3 is negative 2. And then, of course, 5 times 2 pi over 3 is 10 pi over 3. So we're left with the vector negative 3 square root of 3, negative 8, and then. 10 pi over 3. Now since these are vector since these vectors are functions, we can graph them. And the graph of a vector function is called a curve. So if it's two-dimensional, it's a plane curve. If it's a three-dimensional vector function, it's called a space curve. And the vector r that represents the curve is called a vector parameterization of the curve. So as an example, this is the plane curve 4 cosine of t, 3 sine of t, where t ranges from 0 to 2 pi. This is the plane curve, 4 cosine t cubed, 3 sine of t cubed, where t ranges from 0 to 2 pi. Now, you should notice between this curve and this curve, this curve is bolder, right? You see that? Right? So that's because from 0 to 2 pi, this is one trace. However, if it's now t cubed, this is more than one trace. So this, this traces this curve multiple times. That's why it's bolder. And then finally, this is the space curve, cosine of t, sine of t, t, where t ranges from 0 to 4 pi. Now, all of these were created using and program Mathematica. It's really hard to show the three-dimensional object. 
in the actual program Mathematica, you can grab this and rotate it around so you can see it. I just picked the image I felt best for this example. So now let's parameterize a curve obtained as the part of the intersection of the surfaces x squared minus y squared is equal to z minus 1, and x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, where y has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, there are actually two methods to this, and we will look at both of them. So the first method is we take a look and we go, well, we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So this would mean that y squared is equal to 4 minus x squared, which would mean that y would equal plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. However, y has to be greater than equal to 0. So we only take the positive part of this. So y is the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now we also know that x squared minus y squared is equal to z minus 1. Since these are intersecting, this y is this, this form, the square root of 4 minus x squared. So the first thing we're going to do is write z alone as x squared minus y squared plus 1. So z would equal x squared minus 4 minus x squared, right, because it's y squared, plus 1. And this is equal to 2x squared minus 3. Now, x can be any value we want. So we say that x is going to be our parameter. So r of t is the vector parameterization, x is t. So then y would be the square root of 4 minus t squared. And z is 2t squared minus 3. Right? So that's the first method. The second method, I'm going to go ahead and clear all this out. So now for the second method, We'll look and go, well, we know that x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. What we know is that this represents a circle centered at the origin of radius 2. So that will have a parameterization, x equals 2 cosine of t, y equals 2 sine of t. Where 0 is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 2 pi. Now, since y has to be greater than or equal to 0, this means that t itself will actually only go from 0 to pi. So now that we have this, we can now look at the second surface. So x squared minus y squared is equal to z minus 1. Again, that means that z itself will equal x squared minus y squared plus 1. Well, since we already know our x and our y, x squared would be 4 cosine squared of t minus y squared is 4 sine squared of t plus 1. So we can factor out that 4, and we're left with cosine squared minus sine squared. Now, there's a trig identity for cosine squared minus sine squared. So this becomes 4 times the cosine of 2t plus 1. And so our vector parameterization here would be r of t is equal to 2 cosine of t, 2 sine of t, and then 4 cosine of 2t plus 1, where 0 is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to pi.
So that concludes our initial look at vector value functions.